Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network, seeing some new highs set in the trade as we do today's program, getting ready ahead of a holiday with the 4th of July quickly approaching. We're going to talk about really how rock solid this market has been this week with some selling. Of course, we know of some issues at a Cargill facility in Dodge City, Kansas. They're coming back online. But we'll talk about how that's all been working into the factors of this week's market trade. And of course, a lot just waiting on the cash. Let's get the details as we bring in, of course, Brad Coima. He's with Coima Coiman Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. Really, when you talk about it being a rock solid technical week of selling, I think you just put the frosting on the cake. Well, yeah, I tell you what, it was uh, kind of a textbook. Correct. Thanks for having me on. First of all, Susan, I enjoy this a lot, as you know. Um, the uh, uh, market is a market of action and reaction. Okay, I don't care what market you're talking about, whether you're talking about corn or copper, or cocoa, or cattle. Nothing goes straight up. Nothing goes straight down unless you're hogs, maybe um, getting, not getting. Um, so we had the big rally, right? I mean, that whole big leg up where we took new contract highs out last week. And then last Friday, <clears throat> it was, don't forget last Friday was month in and quarter in. So some profit taking, I think, to be expected. Um, Monday was worse than I thought probably had needed to be but i think part of the problem there was that you know we were the market was trying to assimilate the news of uh, what was happening there in dodge city uh, with that one packing plant that had a partial roof collapse over their fab floor um the market is sensitive to that kind of stuff i mean you know i think we all probably at least i know i know right where i was standing uh, when we heard about the holcomb fire on the edge of the grand canyon ironically we were on a little vacation um anyway the uh, um uh, so the, the market, especially at these kind of levels, is, is yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be very sensitive to that. So so we had that big up, Susan, and then we had the two down days, which are not weren't too difficult to explain, right? And mm -hmm. then you'd say one of the simple rules, call me simple, but I, I sometimes think we overthink it, okay? If we, if we go three days against the existing trend, it, it's time to pay attention, okay? Um, so if we've been down and then have three up days, you know what? Maybe we're turning, okay? If we've been up straight up and have more than three down days, um, it can happen and still be fine. But, I mean, it's, it's one of those first, um, you should, you know, the yellow fly, the yellow lights blinking, okay? So, you know, pay attention. Uh, so I thought it was just textbook here. The market came back really, really nicely. And so. You know, when a trade in this good, who needs holidays? Heck, we should be open on Saturdays and Sundays, right? I mean, you know, you know, good close today uh, and real solid. I thought real solid technical action. We've seen a nice accumulation of the open interest here the last little while, too. So it looks like some of our friends in the fund community are, are liking us again and coming back. Um, and they've got a lot of room to go. They do not have a big position here. Um, I, I, I would view that uh, statement as bullish, that they've got a lot of gas in the tank, ammo, whatever you want to call it, dry powder. Um, so... Yeah, nice to see the market correct. And you did talk about that facility, and it's amazing how others' facilities kind of pick up where they need to because they need the cattle. They need to get this cattle moved through. And you know pens that were sold and were processed a day or two later, or even not of the day of. Yeah, 100%. Now, you know, two parts of that question. Yes, uh, the, 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 there's been some added Saturday kill, which should make up for, maybe not completely, but very close. Uh, at three different plants uh, to offset the the down the dark days that they had at that plant there in, in Dodge City because of the the the, the damage from the hard rain, um, and they wouldn't do that unless they had meat sold or if they were doing it profitably, profitably, whatever they're making money. Um, and as to the second part of your question, yeah, not to I don't know if people resent this when I say this. I I apologize in advance, but I do feed cattle. Uh, my brother sells them for me, so he sold cattle for me on Friday for two dollars picked up. What unbelievable, right? I mean, crazy. And two pens of them, and they are both gone. They are both dead or it. They went yesterday and today. So, um, you know, I it, we always like having a little leverage, right? I've talked about leverage, so I'm blue in the face. But to me, that's the market. If we could somehow figure out where that fine line is between not enough and too many, okay? Um, I think we lose that, we lose sight of that. And, and, and we're there because we're current. Let's stay that way. This feels like 2014. We got current in June and it stayed that way until like November. So um, there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be issues. But uh, I really love the way the market feels right now. Do you think this bull market can continue? Barring something that I can't see. Okay. Which 
anymore. You know, I mean, it's it's almost gotten to be the norm. You know, some other black swan. You know, whether it's bird flu or something else. Um, what what what? If we don't have something like that, what'll what'll happen eventually is the 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 grill in the room is the average weights. Cattle are big because the weather's been good. I think now the weather's starting to get hotter. The cattle aren't maybe doing quite the, you know, four pounds a day and two more pounds at night kind of performance like we've seen before. Um, but guys know I'm kidding, right? I knew I know how much cattle can do. Um, um, right. The the uh, so what what could potentially happen is if you get into a time where there actually is a few more cattle, which I would say maybe by August, you know, if, if I, the, that's the way I look at the placement pattern of the fall where we placed a lot of light cattle, you know, and it just takes more time. Um, but at this rate, right now, I feel like in June, we sold the July cattle. In July, we're going to sell what was scheduled for August. In August, we'll sell, if we keep going like this, we'll sell the cattle that are scheduled for September. That's what happened in 2014. And I, at this point, that feels like the trail we're on again. So how tight are the numbers in the north? I know we've talked about this week in and week out, but are they continuing to get tighter? Or are we starting to see just a little bit of give? The beginning and end of all markets starting in Iowa, right? Okay. Yep. We're gonna, somebody's going to remember that eventually, right? One of my favorite sayings I got stuck up on my desk here. Um, show list, you know, from the people that, that carry the show list around here, I know very well, um, um, are still, I would say, a half or more less than what would be typical for this time of year. This would be right when we're in the, right in the heart of the calf run. We're farmer feeders here. We buy calves, we feed them silage and the ground ear corn, da 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 da. Is what we do, you know. So this would be the time where we should be having a lot of uh, 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 cattle. So uh, the fact that that they're not there now, is there a few more cattle than there were in April? Yeah. Uh, because yeah, we were between crops of cattle between the yearlings and the calves. But if I if I would compare it to a year ago and the year before that, uh, we're still very very tight in the north. Um, I I'm surprised that the next thing you aren't going to hear is that you're going to have the packer slash the kill try to slow it down, try to back some cattle up. But I think he's got a conundrum. Meat's moving. He's making a little bit of money. You know, I think everybody's hoping that the other guy will do it so they don't have to because they want to keep killing. Um, yep. So those got to be some tough Monday morning quarterback meetings at the boardroom there. I really feel bad for him. <laughs> well, we get headed into a holiday weekend wishing you guys a great 4th of July. What's the best way for folks to get a hold of you, Brad? Yeah, have a good holiday, safe one. Um, and uh, glad you're feeling a little bit better, Susan. Uh, kkvtrading.com or 712-722-0023. All right. Quick reminder, commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss, not suitable to all investors. And that's this week's Cattle Call on the Rural Radio Network. <laughs>